<laughs> See, that could be problematic, especially if you're launching into someone's head in the dark. It's like warning lights. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, if you're trying to 360 no scope someone with a controller. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, Whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stoner at LGC Axel Switching the Bits, joined every week by our man up north, keeping Baby Yoda safe. It's Gracarot. Gracarot. Baby Yoda show. Shut up. <laughs> Jordan's fine. And the Kaka Mothman, Kaka the Prophecy, the Pedro <laughs> Mateus. Stay in a blade past his bedtime in Britannia with you. Shout Realm Dynamic. Watching this live What's on you? Twitch. Helping us form. Cocaine, Voltron. See, look, now I'm done talking, so you, you, it, there's no point yeah. trying to interject. What, what, would you would you watch a movie called The Mothman Pedro? Probably. Uh, I would, but that's because I'm a massive narcissist. Okay. Well, I mean, that, that goes without saying. I think he's afraid of moths. You know, here, here's the <laughs> bonus soda for everyone tuning in live. The moth is still loose in the apartment. It's a moose yeah. on the loose. <laughs> it wouldn't stop, so I didn't want to leave a trail of moth so dust all it, over the wall. Moth carnage. Keep your pinky toes <laughs> crossed. You might hear Pedro squee. Yeah, I don't think that has happened any time recently. So, girlfriend, well, I can we, make we, it we happen. Can, we can hold out hope. Yeah, I mean, we can is, hold out hope. <laughs> yes, you have the post control. <laughs> I, I think about that every fucking Sunday because I'm like, I could just dial that up a little bit. Mm. Hey, Pedro and the chipmunks. Yeah, Dude, like it'd be too easy. So, uh, we like to play that little game, play a little bit of catch up because we have not played Trine this week. <laughs> yeah, so we. We, we have what to talk about. <laughs> exactly. Uh, one thing that did happen earlier this week was um, Doom Eternal. They updated that. So it has the DLSS stuff, which works now under Proton because NVIDIA, hey, it works now. Okay. I went and tried it. And yes, I can, with my little 2060, I can play it UHD, Doom Eternal on like, high. And um, that's pretty neat. It also enabled ray tracing, which is fucking hilarious because it lies to you. I put it down at 1080p, got on the ray tracing, and it's just for lighting, right? It's not trying to trace all the rays, just some of the rays. I'm like, okay, wait, this is going to work with DLSS. I had it unbalanced, and I looked around, then I started running off it and immediately, like, dropped down to 15. Like, well, there goes that dream. Nothing of value was lost. Also... It is the 3rd of July, and as Jordan said, uh, apparently they were celebrating with Freedom Crackers in Canada. So, yeah, July, July 1st, ah. Canada Day. So, uh, yeah, I, I got I got to deal with that on Tuesday night, which is fantastic. <laughs> so that be prepared. There might be an explosion or two throughout the show. And, uh, oh, another thing I'm doing, right? I'm like reworking some of the stuff on the podcast uh, audio after the fact, you might notice that you might not, because I'm guessing most people don't have like studio monitor headphones to listen to our nonsense. What's new with you, though, man? Um, bought any chandeliers lately? No, oh, no, I, I okay. haven't. Um, I did. I did buy a TV, though. Uh, so my my girlfriend does the extreme couponing points collecting thing, and I get I get I get a text from her last week. They're like, "Hey." How big's the the mount in the den? And I'm like, why? Cause I can get a 58 inch UHD TV for 150 bucks, and I'm like, I don't need a new TV, but it's 150 bucks. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and it's 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 a big TV, and it's like, well, 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 shit. I guess I I guess I have a new TV now. Um, I I got to set up a PSVR uh, as well. We got one for uh, the upstairs den. Beat Saber is the uh, is the uh, main course du jour. Although I'm looking forward to installing Gorn because I like games where you can rip people's limbs How's off. How's the and uh, PSVR thing? I mean, do, is it immersive enough? Do you think you'll have any material for um, VR to ER subreddit? No, 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 not 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 really. Um, find finding the right height because the camera has a pretty limited field of view. Actually, is is the yeah, is, is the main you problem. Put it down, trying to. <laughs> oh well, 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 no, because like I, I can set it for my height, but my girlfriend and her kid are a bunch of fucking shorties, so uh, I gotta like, so 
the, no, this, no, this, no. this you, becomes the problem. You, you're going to get somebody <laughs> hurt. You need to buy him boxes to stand on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, speaking, you speaking cannot of boxes, move. <laughs> speaking of boxes, I was trying to buy lumber to build a box squat box, and okay. I don't have space to do that. Uh-huh. But I did. I did. Speaking of squats, I did squat over 400 for the first time in uh, like six months, and it felt really good, and I'm very happy about it. So, yay, bootyosity. Maybe Extreme I can get you like, um, like a little scouter. Put that on. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, 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 I would, I would <laughs> buy that on my own. I, I want I, that. Was, that was the biggest missed opportunity of like Google Glass. Was, if they made it look like a Dragon Ball Z scouter, that would be it. They would have, they would have sold every every unit. They, they would have sold a lot of them. <laughs> If they would just change OK Google, hi, I'm sorry of everyone to operator, I'd be a lot happier in life. No. Or Vegeta. (laughs) (laughs) Pedro, you have a new audio interface that kind of only works on Linux these days. Yes, and apparently uh, likes to throw staticky noises every now and then. Um, Hopefully that won't happen anymore. But yeah, uh, I kind of ran out of contact cleaner, but it's an Apugi, an Apugi 1, which uh, if you didn't catch Ven's video on that, it's uh, one of the teeny tiny ones that has a built-in microphone and uh, it has phantom power. And Oh man, you should have done it with the uh, microphone. You can cut that thing on. You could have got some tape, put it on the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'd need some tape because it's supposed to come with the little clip that you could actually mount it to one of these arms, but it was broken. And the seller was like, look, this is really broken. Do you want it? No, no it's okay. You can you don't imagine, though. <laughs> these, these, these were not cheap devices. Like, this was like the budget thing. And it was like 300 bucks back in the day. But it's also a Mac user. So, yeah, he's thinking like, oh, it's not in pristine gear. It's trash. It's a Throw it away, but you got it like really <laughs> so, cheap. Though, yeah, right? the 28 yeah. pounds, uh, yeah. that, that's how much that costs. But the same as one of the old laptops that I usually go for, so yeah. <laughs> so so how, how is life on USB 1.0 out of curiosity? 1.1. 1. 1. I don't know. 1. It's connected 1. to 1. a USB 1. 3 port because that's the only one I had free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. How about the, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. The horse is not USB compatible. No, the horse is a moth now. Not anymore. It's been flying around Pedro's <laughs> apartment, terrorizing him and Nori and pissing in its cereal and like licking all the beers. It's the steam. Linux. Update. So what do we get this week? Right. We got a new beta and I'm so happy to report that it might have fixed some of your problems at home. Um, Pedro's going to a couple things. One thing I noticed, they've improved uh, the Vulcan Ray Tracing support, which is neat. That's great. Uh, Pedro, they've done something to the DualSense, though, right? They did. They actually have the full finalized mapping for the DualSense. So uh, if you turn on Steam input for literally any game that actually supports it, that will work. And I just bumped the table. The... <laughs> the um, yeah, it's still going to be a bit of a crapshoot whether or not it works out of the box without Steam input, but unless the game doesn't support Steam input at all or any controllers whatsoever, mm-hmm. this should work with everything now. Have you have you have you <laughs> dicked around with any of the Steam input stuff? Like, because I know I know the DualSense has a bunch of like haptic feedback stuff and like sensitivity options. Is that all exposed the haptics, through? Uh, the haptics aren't fully working yet. Uh, you do get rumble, basic rumble emulation, same as you do on the Steam controller. Uh, but the, yeah, no, the haptic, like, per region rumble uh, is not up yet. They do have all of the LEDs up and running. The, that is actually oh, working. You get the oh, little teeny tiny LED down so here blinks. to wow. indicate oh, if it's player one or player two. What about yeah. the uh, what about the gyros? Because if you're, if you're going to be playing, like, any sort of third-person shooter on the couch, that works. then you... Yep. Nice. See, that could be problematic, especially if you're launching into someone's head in the dark. It's like warning lights. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I, I mean, if you're trying to 360 no scope someone with a controller while you're throwing it at I'm them, yeah, you might. <laughs> there's, there's some yeah, the gyro problems. is supported. Uh, it's just that. the haptics that are still basic rumble right now. Here's uh, one thing that um, you might have noticed the past couple of Steam, if you're in the client betas. Your download speeds just went to poo. Doesn't matter if you're on fiber gigabit. I'm on 600 down. 
it's like the old days. I'm mean, like 20. I know, I know. You, you want to throw me out a window, rightfully so. Down to like 24, 25 megabytes a second. Like, ah, how do I live like this? Some peasants. Well, it was an issue with NAT, again, that they, they like to cock that up every, yeah. <laughs> And that's always kind of tricky to deal with too, because like depending depending on like what your edge device is, they'll implement it differently and whatever nap punching you do may work for some but not for others. This is true, but this has been a very I know this is at least the third time I've went back and like, oh, okay, we fixed the net thing again because I immediately went from that twenty four maybe it would creep up to thirty to just you know, hey Talos, I found another use for you. Right. <laughs> Just a download <laughs> test. Um, and I shot up to like 58 megabytes a second. Like, yay, we're back. So hopefully that will fix it for everyone. And, and we- they fixed the little uh, window of darkness uh, when you get the update. I saw you post I, when that I saw in the Discord, yeah. man. I saw that and <laughs> I didn't even notice it. I'm so trained. I'm like, whatever. You're not going to be able to. <laughs> I posted that. Was like, no, one, no one noticed that at the time, but. When I saw the little window come up, I was like, oh, hey, I can actually read the update notes. Nice. When you, post, a- when you posted that image, I had to look at it and think for like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think Steam does a very good job of conditioning you to ignore a lot of its UI or just a lot of Steam mm-hmm. in general. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's quite hard hmm. when they make these little changes. Well, this isn't. Well, I don't know. Is this a little change when you change the name of a project? How does that roll, man? Uh, it's, uh, it's, I, sometimes it's dramatic. Sometimes it isn't. These guys, I don't know. I think less so. Yeah, I think it is just changing a distro name to be less generic to be more what they generic-y. believe it to be. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> a different kind of generic ness uh, generic fullness there. <laughs> uh, but keep, yeah, keep making Gamerous, up words. I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I, I was getting Gamerous, comfortable. Um, is not uh, is not called Gamerous anymore. It's called Chimera OS or Chimeros. Yes. Ch- Chimerios? Uh, it's my favorite cereal. <laughs> I just like the um, marshmallow bits. Jesus. But, Both yeah. of you illiterate peasants. It's called Gamer OS Chimera OS. Uh, Chimera OS. And, and it now has a like primary or secondary school sporting mascot. It Go does, yeah. it, it does look like one of the sports Fierce. ball mascots. Yes. Uh, but it is, yeah, it is Gamorous, which, if you don't remember, is uh, that arch based Steam big picture mode distro uh, that uh, we got called out for. But it's not arch, but it's totally running on arch. But it's not arch. So, yeah, there's a new version yeah, of it. It's, it's and, Chimera OS now. It's not arch. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, the the big change is very much the rename to Chimera OS, and you can install using Wi-Fi, which is nice. So it means I actually I can actually uh, get off my ass and finish refactoring the Steam box to, well, yeah. make the GPU not quite so loud when the fans kick up. <laughs> That's the main problem. <laughs> I mean, there there are, there are a couple other changes other than just the name change. They added three more games to their uh, certified game list. If you're unaware of Gamera's giant fire breathing Fall turtle slash writer. yeah yeah uh flaming lizard slash lion headed scorpion tailed lion bodied uh wait no that's uh, they have a snake with for wings. whatever chimera yeah with <laughs> with yeah the wings of an eagle and the body of a bull and the head of a lion and the tail of a snake yeah there we go chimera i, remember that I know greek yes. mythology um yeah it's it's uh, my favorite preschool song. Anyways, um, yeah, they, they have a curated list of games that they say these are 100% guaranteed to work. We've curated them on like Intel, AMD, NVIDIA. So if you have, uh, if you're going to play these games on Chimera OS now, you know they'll work. Um, they also updated to the latest uh, kernel, NVIDIA, Mesa drivers, all that stuff. So, I mean, it's a good update to pull nonetheless, just for like general performance and security I, stuff. No matter what your take is, it it. It is a very good thing that they are at least keeping the spirit of Steamos alive because Valve, let's, let's be honest, kind of forgot about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then again, I mean, Valve's doing a lot of other stuff. You, you, you can, yeah. yeah. Pick up yeah, th- these guys, these guys also have a couple like interesting stuff on the side. Like, uh, they're, they're doing like steam tweaks and steam buddy and whatnot mm-hmm. to like make, uh, making, making sure that your games will work or implementing tweaks are as uh, simple as possible, which is uh, very, very nice. Ma- making making Steam on Linux a lot more usable just by like encouraging that one click Proton experience to the best of their ability. Yes. And if they 
and if they have to take on some work on the back end, that's also, that's fine. Right. Like, right on. Yeah. So like most of you, my favorite part of polar bears are their tusk, right? I thought it was because they were the deadliest predator in the animal kingdom. Also tusk. Uh, Warhammer, man. <laughs> Warhammer, not one, not two, but three. But there, there's a qualifier. Um, total war. Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you can pre-purchase oh, hi, Feral. It. Yeah, <laughs> Feral Interactive. The, uh, they still do the things when all they have to do is... <laughs> not much. Um... Here's the thing. Can we test this impact, make sure it still works? Okay. I, if you're familiar with the Total War series, it, we've all played a couple of different versions of it. And, you know, I, I've given it several tries, up to including the um, Total War Warhammer, because I kind of like the Warhammer. Just not a big fan of the Total War series. Nothing against it. It's just like, that's a spreadsheet simulator. And um, I, I, I really hoped that the first Warhammer, I, I thought it looked really nice. It did. It was a very well done skill pack. Uh, skin pack, I should say, but I I, th- I was hoping it was going to be more Warhammer and less Total War, but that was just not the case. And I'm guessing this is going to be more of the same, but you can pre-purchase it for $59.99 and you know it will have a Linux native port courtesy of Feral yeah. Interactive, so... Yeah, there, there's definitely a non-zero number of people in our viewing audience who are super stoked about this. But yeah, like, to Vince's point, the total the total war formula doesn't really do it for me. Unless you're into, like, really big, large-scale, grand strategy combats. Um, maybe not for you, but I know a lot of people are super into it. Apparently, Henry Cavill is a big mark for this series. So if you want to play games with him online, maybe join online matches on Total War <laughs> I don't know. In, well, well, he's in between fuck fil- and the yeah. Geralt voice. <laughs> yeah, that's that's only that's only if you beat him though. So you got to get better than Henry Cavill. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh man, you just like uh, go cut off his mustache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, no, now, 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 I'm just now I'm just upset that I don't have season two of The Witcher out now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, okay. Madness. More new games. Yes. Madness Project Nexus. Um, it's coming soon. Yeah, it's got uh, audio. release date. Yeah, plan release date of 2021. Uh, it is a 2D beat 'em up. Um, and part of the uh, part of the gimmick here is that you can like build and customize your own weapons. Uh, and like part of the progression is actually building these custom weapons. Uh, how many dicks they, can I, you carry at one time? All of them, <laughs> I, really. Let's just be real. Like. <laughs> I, I kind of get a little bit of a Newgroundsy vibe from the from the art aesthetic. Okay. Um, yeah, especially in game. Newgrounds meets uh, Assault Android Cactus. I very much like how it looks. I kind of want to play it. <laughs> one one thing um, one thing that I do see that's a little concerning though. They got that in in the uh, details. They have shared split screen co op and remote play together. To which I say, no, <laughs> stop it, bad gibbing tree. <laughs> Stop doing that and implement some fucking online multiplayer, you piece of shit. No, nothing would ever happen that prevents you from going over to your friend's house and um, enjoying some local couch co-op. <laughs> no. Nope. No idea. Uh-uh. It we'll, didn't kill my grandma or anything. <laughs> listen, man. No idea Dude, what's going on. <laughs> look at it this way. It, it, it is our duty as humans not to learn fuck or all. So, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Steam Remote Play. For the win. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to not playing it, but that's the only way to. Right. Yeah. yeah like, well, I'll see you in two years if you decide to implement a network multiplayer. Something that does you, have yeah. the multiplayer that you and I went all the way through and we were, I think we probably had some of the, um, like, technically adept falling the fuck out of elevators that the game oh was there was oh man that. that was there, 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 there was a lot of that and that la- man you gotta love when the last boss fight is literally down to you and the boss at that last sliver oh. of health and you're desperately just trying to get one hit in and right that was that was that was some pretty choice shit i was i was quite <laughs> pleased about that but why, why are we waxing about this because streets of rage 4 has some new dlc coming out mr x nightmare it's coming out on july 15th you can pick it up for about 7.99 uh, it's going to add a bunch of stuff like um, Estelle, my my wife, who I want to just crush some skulls with and then have her crush my skull in between her legs. Uh, Max, Thunder, and Shiva, who were bosses in the main campaign. They're now playable. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to get them automatically or you have to unlock them through gameplay, like the uh, the old uh, 16-bit dude. Yeah. But 
I don't know. Um, they added a new difficulty level, uh, training modes, new color balance, palettes. New ba- yeah, new weapons, balancing, and a survival mode, so you can just keep raging until you die and see how long. And you a get. Stargate. <laughs> oh man, we got we got to go through the Fargate. I I'm looking forward to this. I I, I really want to see what the uh, the uh, DLC has, and I guess we're gonna Ven and I are gonna play through it once. Yeah. It's, how it's much? On July fifteenth. Uh, how much time do you think? How much is this gonna run us? Uh. 14 wait no that's for the full game the dlc itself is going to be 7.99 it's going to be out on july 15th so yeah it it adds a bunch of new modes so i think like whatever the the campaign is it's going to be relatively short and like the other stuff like unlocking it or because because like a lot a lot of the stuff with streets of rage in general is just high score chasing right right uh you, you can you can you can play through it once and that's a relatively short experience because it's an arcade experience you're going for the, the high score well, one of the things about Streets of Rage 4 is, I mean, it's definitely got the ogre parfait going on with the layers of people like, no, this is what I do. I'm good at this and I can get all the yeah. max high scores and all this. Me and you were like, ah, smash our way through win. Yay, credits. Yeah, I made, I made it to the end. <laughs> Go me. <laughs> right. Well, now you guys can play on Mania Plus, which is the new difficulty level. <laughs> no, 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 we I'm won't. Good. I'm good. <laughs> tell, tell, tell me about ultra complicated roguelikes, Pedro. Oh, man. I do like me some ultra complicated roguelikes. I'm not very good at them, but I like them. Uh, Tales of Majael very much fits into the definition and version 174 Wandering Star is released. It, as usual, comes with a whole laundry list of stuff that they added. Uh, Some highlights that I found, uh, there's chat portraits now, so you don't have to actually read the names to figure out what came from where or from who. I don't know what Uh, trap priming is, but man, they fixed it. Yeah, uh, yeah the, that's actually, once the trap is already placed, you can prime it again, so it, yeah. Uh, assassinate, the skill actually works properly now, which was annoying to try and play the assassin class, just, yeah. Uh, the new cl- There's a new class that basically completes the uh, roguelike circle, which is just insane, and I love it. Uh, there used to be, there, there still is, the adventurer class, which you can pick the skill trees that you want. Or you could go with one of the preset ones. Now, there's <laughs> there's a class that just gives you a random uh, skill trees every time. That's, what? that's just on. perfect. What, what, what am I seeing here? What, why is there planet? Uh, because because, uh, because this is this is, this is yeah this is nineteen <laughs> this is nineteen seventies to nineteen eighties era fantasy where people mm-hmm. like yeah I'm just gonna ride a dragon into space and fight some tie fighters. Right. It was just a thing that happened. All right. And uh, yetis are now 100% less prude. I have no idea what that means. So, uh, in my so, time playing that game, I never encountered yetis. There, so so appa- apparently, <laughs> apparently there's a problem too with like, the yetis have a little white fur thing coming out of their loincloth, so it looks like they have little dicks. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's pretty good. It's, um, but yeah, every every time I look at this game, I'm like, wow, this looks like really cool, but god damn, is it daunting. It is. But I gotta say, they'll probably, whatever whatever the end result is, it's gonna be better than the thing we're throwing chairs at this and for the price, I mean, this thing's under six bucks. It will probably run on a Pentium. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> the T42 and a half. <laughs> I installed it on there just to be sure it does. Right on. <laughs> right on. Uh, CPU accelerated GL. Yeah, it works. It's fine. <laughs> no, so, no, no. It has a Radeon X300. So R300 drivers for the win. <laughs> I can't count that high, so it doesn't exist. Now, what do we think? Uh, it, it's always a tricky thing, man. When, when you effectively rework your entire game, which I, I got to mm-hmm. feel after like reading this, they did. And it very much looks like they did. So you may remember uh, us trying to, and eventually succeeding at playing Forced, and then uh, Beta Dwarf released Forced Showdown, which in my opinion uh, is the better game, but uh, the whole of the internet disagrees with me, so they made Minion Masters, which is effectively a better version of uh, MTG Battlegrounds for, you know, the two of you out there that remember that piece of shit. Nope. So, uh, so the, what, the, the one other person in the audience? Because I remember that. 1v1 so. me. Yes, basically. <laughs> 2v2 changes. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, yeah, the game that they actually were successful with was Minion Masters. And it's, uh, I don't remember it ever being available for Linux, but it, it, it's free to play and it works with Proton 
And yeah, it is. They're doing a massive overhaul for the whole thing. And if you are subscribed to their thing, like I was because of a forced showdown, every week they send out an email. It's like, yeah, you get some free stuff for Minion Masters, you know, that game that you never played yet. It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is. Uh, it's free to play by all means. If you do like it, uh, just load it up with Proton. It works. And it is very much a better version of MTG Battlegrounds, which not a very high bar to set, but it is good. Also, yeah. I would definitely keep an eye out on um, the version of the game because anything that shows up here, I basically ends up because I sort by Linux and I sort by new. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but then again, Proton. And loaded. if you have, yeah, if you have Force or Force Showdown in your Steam library, right. it'll show up on the news at the top as well because same people. <laughs> yeah, the, the the one complaint I have seen about this game is that there's like a fairly small number of cards so that the, so the strategies are kind of limited. But as long as they keep adding stuff, I think it should be fine. Mm-hmm. Fair right. enough. Well, that yes. does it. Coming up next, Humble wants to cha-cha slide and Unity wants you to click export. Cha-cha slide online. sounds slippery. Well, the, the news will be coming up in a moment uh, since we already covered the whole big, oh, DLSS is coming to Ow. Linux last week. Ow. It's explosive Ow. news, Ow. yeah. <laughs> Someone's shooting at Ven. You can hear the pops. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the, pop, pop, make yeah, no, drop. All the drivers have already been uh, taken care of. So this week, we just talk about good old uh, regular Linux adjacent news, as usual. But before we get to that, we need to thank you every single one of you that make this a thing every single (laughs) one of you shooting fireworks at ben (laughs) right now we really have to thank you if you want to help us buy more fireworks to a sale ben you can head on over to patreon.com i want to take some roman candles to your podcast ben (laughs) (laughs) this this, this is gonna be like icbms but with like fireworks this this is like the the escalation the body does not want to handle yeah cold war mark (laughs) ii Canada versus U.S. Yeah, so if you, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. Yeah, yeah become, a, be, be, become explosive. a Patreon. Yeah, yes. um, he, becoming a Patreon gets you some cool stuff. You get access to our Discord channel. Uh, if you give us two fifty a week, then you get access to our show notes, and you become an executive producer. You get access to the pre pre super shows and live stream where we show up an hour before we start streaming this nonsense and talk about more nonsense. Yeah, it's oh, very man. nonsense filled stuff. Uh, we have a bunch of other contributor levels as well. You get your name in the credits. You get access to the show notes so that you can you know make suggestions. Uh, issue corrections, etc., yeah, etc. That, that, that's even, a fancy way of saying talking shit to us during the week. Absolutely, which you can, talking which shit you can to better us do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. On on uh, Discord, which you know, you can also get access to by subbing to us on Twitch. You should definitely do that. Um, yeah, we got we got uh, a store store.linuxgamecast.com oh, for all of your Linux merchandising requirements: coffee cups, stickers, masks. We need Roman candles. We do need, we need custom LGC fireworks that explode into <laughs> yes. cocaine Voltron. <laughs> Those would probably we figure be out how to do that. frighteningly cheap to get made in the States. No, man. <laughs> LGC brand explosive. It's like fucking Spaceballs the flamethrower. Yeah. There. We have, uh, we have our, we have our wish zones as well. Um, <laughs> if you, if you buy some stuff, uh, if you go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button, you can find my, my wish list, Ven's wish list, or Pedro's wish list. Uh, if you buy stuff off there, you can give us little notes to read. Uh, this was you supposed to a, arrive uh, yesterday or last week. Why, and why but, didn't it, mister? Because I didn't update <laughs> the address on my Amazon wish list, which is the thing that I learned Not that I needed to do. <laughs> yes. So uh, I got, I got uh, Dungeons and Dragons book, uh, Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, from, yeah, here we go. Uh, Eship uh, sent it to me uh, with the note of that. No one should be wishing for Candlekeep from Eship. So, um, yeah, this is a book full of, like, adventures. So, I guess, Eship, if you want me to run some D&D for you, I guess it's the least I can do for you spending 50 bucks on a book for me. Uh, so, I guess hit me up on that, and, yeah, might run some stuff. Uh, I did put Eship on the board. He's on you the, did, he's yeah. Fine, I'm standing cannibals. Look at that. That's what fuck stands for, you perverts. Yes. Drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, man. Um, that's pretty tight. And uh, we do need to think, um, we got some bits. 
We got some bits. We do. Those are good. Right? Fluttershy 2077 uh, dropped some uh, bits in the intermission. Can, because, can we like, uh, roll around in bits? Uh, like, uh, effectively, like Scrooge McDuck? <laughs> like glitter? Not uh, to any extent, no. Uh, <laughs> that's not going to stop me. I'm still going to try it. <laughs> Yeah, we we could tr- well, you could try, but uh, uh, that's like two dollars worth can, of bits. You can you can print out origami bits and fold them and put them into a like a kiddie pool and dive into it. <laughs> I mean, I can just fuck up some paper with a shredder, man. And like, yeah, uh, the, the the important thing is that you dive at first in the kiddie pool. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Point. Hey, thanks for letting us do this. I uh, completely user listener financed, and we don't have any ads or anything like that. We do our own hosting. And all that fun stuff. Oh, stick around. If you're a patron at any level, if you are interested in some of this audio stuff, I'm done with all of the principal photography and filming for this Moto MK3. And it's going to be a little bit of an adventure because we can finally use them on Linux with the also drivers. I'm going to walk through everybody through that with like a big disclaimer because you got to do like a future video of like, hey, if you're running kernel 514, ignore the first 20 minutes of this video. That's mm-hmm. going to be a thing. So, yeah, thanks. Ting. Ting. All right. Yeah. So, let's talk, let's talk about slipping and sliding all through the night. Mm. <laughs> well, you might remember a few, few months ago, Humble did some A-B testing. They did. They removed sliders, changed sliders, and it didn't matter. Most people didn't notice until somebody did. Then, you know, the internet does the internet thing or it loses its collective fuck mothering mind. And, um, yeah. As, as you do. That went down. Yep. Humble, Humble did the uh, thing of like, oh, okay, well, have they tuckered themselves out yet? Because we're still going to change this. <laughs> and they have. So in mid July, uh, they're going to be rolling out a new iteration of sliders that creates even more opportunities to support important. Uh, <laughs> No, really, just cut this shit. What they've done <laughs> is set it to where you cannot. Uh, the, if we run this through our um, patented um, D bullshittertron 9000, it basically says, hi, we're humble. We get tired of you fuckers setting our cut to zero. This changes mm-hmm. that. Yes. Yep. And uh, the, they the, the, literally the, changed the uh, thing from you being uh, allowed to put it all the way down to the minimum being anywhere between 15 and 30%. Mm-hmm. The minimum. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's in there, right? And at least they're they're keeping some of the options. I mean, like, yeah. The Honestly, I had some doubts about Humble's uh, sustainability vis-a-vis all the charity stuff uh, and, like, the sliders early, earlier, like, years ago mm-hmm. so clear, clear, clearly they had to do something to rectify it because they need to do this in order to maintain profitability because you know we need infinite profits forever um yep. but i don't think it's gonna really affect much unless like in general the prices go up here's a real question here's a real question i thought about this and even you know, I, I, we spoke to this earlier i did myself i think the sliders are there when i, I get something off humble I don't because I usually open the game developer sliders and everyone that doesn't have a Linux version of their game, I put it to zero. See, for me, <laughs> Humble, you know, we have that nostalgia. We have that love for Humble from way back in the day in the initial Humble bundle because what? We have Linux games. Uh, oh, five games for Linux. Like Gish and Penumbra there. and all that fun stuff. And, <sighs> you know, th- that was it. We, did, we didn't have Steam and we waited for that every year for our dash of games. We were very happy to give them all the monies that we could. But, you know, time moved on. These days, I wouldn't say for the past couple of years, I think, you know, we're humble partners. So, hey, if you click one of our links, we get a cut, but we all send more of that to charity than to our own pockets. But, um, I genuinely just think of Humble as just another online retailer at this point. When I go Which to buy is something. kind of, yeah, it's it's kind of what they've become. It's they're trying to push the curated game service, which you know is they successful have to some And I, I've seen it like as a I can speak to this as um, humble partner. You'll notice like I I get these emails like one two a day, and it's always like sales stuff. Like oh, this publishers, I, I don't post that. I'm like hey, go click on this if there's a good bump bundle but that's rare now I, you might get like a decent bundle every other month 
Yeah. Honest, honestly, I find a lot more value out of the book bundles than the game bundles usually. Mm-hmm. But the uh, software bundle if you're an artist bundles. is usually pretty good too. Yep. Yeah. The for yeah Sound the audio bundles. Yeah. 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 They, they they've definitely spread out, and it's definitely it's been it's been hit or miss, right? Because it depends on the type of shit you're trying to sell. Um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. Like like I said, I, I think as long as they can keep overall prices down. People are gonna care less about this. I feel a little sad that the devs are gonna, the devs of the actual games are gonna get a even smaller cut now. But yes, yeah. and uh, don't let uh, don't let a um, little uh, Timmy Epic catch you pricing a bundle with one of their games at thirty uh, percent. Otherwise, they might prove just how big a hypocrite they actually are. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> The um, I guess that means yeah. something. I, I don't keep track of the epic yes, stuff like uh, you. Humble know. sells epic store games on the humble store as yeah, well. But they sell and, like uh, you play games too because I've accidentally yes. almost almost and, uh, I was little like, Timmy Whoa, epic. Little Timmy epic has been very vocal about the thirty percent thing, and now here we are with a minimum anywhere between fifteen and thirty percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you 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 you'd think though that if they're on on humble like that if you're going to put your game on humble, humble you know you're not going to be selling it for full price ever, right? You're not getting that. Yes, but that not, that logical way to play it out doesn't let Pedro do the thing. I did the thing. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, sp- speaking of doing I the thing, did the thing. <laughs> if you if you are a game developer and you've you've sold the Linux game, maybe that thing you've done is click the export button. And how, have, how dare you? <laughs> Never Be, heard of <laughs> so frighteningly accurate. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, U- Unity has a blog post up uh, on uh, links to all this uh, in our show notes. You can check that out. But they are adding the support for building and porting to Chrome. Yes, OS. Unity. We need an expand button on this giant ass picture. Yes, clearly. Um, no, just in no, case. No, it can be. It needs to be bigger, Ben. God damn. It needs to be bigger. So yeah. Um. With uh, Unity 20, uh, 21.2 beta, you can, uh, if you've built your game for Android, you can now ex- click export and it will export to Chrome OS as well. And you know what? I saw this and I thought to myself, this is kind of weird. You think if you want to invest in gaming and Chromebooks, what you want to do is you really want to nail down your web VK and your web ASM or your web assembly support so that you can just store your shit elsewhere and run everything locally through the browser. But this, uh, this apparently lends some credence to the theory that that we're going to start seeing some more quote unquote gaming capable Chromebooks. I think if, the, if they're going to pr- be providing it just as an outright target. Uh, now. Let's see, this is immediate. And my first thought was like, there's uh, most cases because when you think of Chromebooks are the most popular ones that you're going to be seeing in schools and the ones, the sub like right around $200 ones, mm-hmm. n- nine times out of 13, those are going to be less powerful than the mobile devices. People yeah. Have. But like, but also like graphic, you're not, they're not the schools aren't buying these systems to sell games on, right? I'm just saying I think, what, what I'm saying is like having that option to target, knowing that your mm-hmm. largest surface area is going to be calculators effectively with shit worse graphics than calculators. But to be fair, the phones that sell the most are also the around a hundred to two hundred dollar ones. So yeah, you see, Pedro, going to if be- if you put it like that, <laughs> my argument doesn't sound as cool. So let's not. Yeah. <laughs> You did that to me earlier, so I get to do it to you now. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, it it really does seem like Google is trying to like push Chrome OS as like we're a real boy operating system. We're not just a tinker toy thing. And they've been you know, trying to with, do with, that for a yeah. While. With, with, Shut with, up, I, 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 Well, now, now with now with like Windows 11 coming down the pipe, you, I think we're going to start seeing that push as well because. This is going to be around the time that people are going to start looking at buying new computers now that, like, the new shit is coming out that and people TPM are promoting. 2. Well, you just imagine, I mean, yeah. to speak to Jordan's point, I'm like, hey, let's do everything on the web. Let's stream it, like, like Geoforce Now and uh, Stadia and whatever the fuck the thing is. Or n- 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 not even that, just like... Go, 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 go ahead and roll sure. this out. Is that, that's a great idea, unless you're in the business of making game engines. Then all of a sudden, like, eh, maybe we want to give them the option play it locally i just don't know what exactly you can get away with and i do not people have made companies have made high-end chromebooks and we all laughed at them their collector's items <laughs> yeah i, 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 was, I, I, I was, still defend dell's effort for the 7400 chromebook that's a good chromebook 
And I was I was thinking less game streaming and more just like having the just running the game through the browser, right? Browsers are cap- with WebDK. You can have your browser paint to your GPU. You can actually utilize the graphical hardware. Uh, WebAssembly allows you some like pretty efficient low level coding. So you could theoretically port your your game engine to WebAssembly WebDK, uh, and then just run run it in the browser. And then when you need like the, the levels or the textures or whatnot, you grab them asynchronous, asynchronously through the browser, right? Like, not it's not, a, not an awful idea. No, it's not an awful idea, but it's like a game streaming with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. No, no it's, the, it's still, you're still, you're you're still running streaming. it locally. Yeah, yeah, you're running it locally, so even if you happen to be somewhere without internet, you can still play the game. Yeah. Yeah, you're just you're just using or your whatever happens to be built with Unity because yeah, Unity we automatically associate it and the other game engines with games, but there are some clever people out there using game engines to do not game stuff. Now, <laughs> can't you run pretty much Android apps on all Chromebooks at this point? Yes. <laughs> but like, that's like, going like a, through a containerized yeah. virtualization system similar to the Linux one, except without as big of a performance impact for now. Uh, so, so, so you really need that roll speed on your, on your Chromebook. You're going to need everything you can no. get less. Yeah. For less battery usage, I think is the big point here. Right. And to your point if, earlier about the mobile devices, because that's the one thing that arm still has on X86, which a lot of Chromebooks, if you want a useful Chromebook, you kind of need an X86 one. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. Well, no. So I look, f- I look forward to the Chrome OS people enjoying export jobs much the same way that we yes. on under Linux enjoy them. <laughs> Share the pain. You're up next. Uh, Hi. up next. Uh, <laughs> Hero Games Launcher. That- <laughs> We were, we were talking. We were talking about pre. All right, I'll keep going. We were talking about free games in the uh, in the middle in the in between segments uh, during the the intermission. And yeah, if you're if you're one of those people who goes to the Epic Games Store to you know but get a free game every once every month or so, uh, you might want a way to organize and curate them. And that's what Heroic Games Launcher does. They have a new release out one eight zero now available on Mac and Windows because you know fuck. <laughs> Epic still can't be asked to pr- create a proper UI for Windows, so here we here we're at mm-hmm. here we are. Um, it'll um, it'll also stop uh, creating uh, desktop icons. I wrote snapshots in the show notes. That's wrong. Uh, desktop icons when you specifically tell it not to when you install games. Uh, there's a bunch of um, bug fixes and some better controllers su- or better Proton support in here as well. They also made some uh, claims about what's coming down the pipe for Heroic as well. That's kind of interesting. Uh, they're working on an update queue similar to like how Steam has. You can you can see what games are gonna be uh, have updates that need to be downloaded, et cetera, et cetera, and also controller support, which will be handy if you're going to be using this in your TV box, perhaps using Gamerus, yes, mm. which mm. is supported. Yep, <laughs> and uh, if you uh, something that you may want to disable, unless you want everyone on your Discord server to know that you're running uh, Epic Store games, uh, Discord rich. Um, Discord rich presence uh, has now been enabled on all platforms, which used to be a thing that didn't work Except, at all on Linux. Un- unless you're in an app. But in now it does. They say that. Yes. <laughs> Why would you ever have that enabled? Because I don't want to install Hero <laughs> Games Launcher locally. I, I want know. people to know that I'm playing this specific game and I'm in this particular area. I don't need people knowing how bad I am at games. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, if I had that enabled on Discord, I would intentionally only be like playing Hello Kitty Island, Bar- Barbie, yep. Zombie Slay Adventure, something. You wish know. a lot of people just w- use it for the memes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish Barbie Slay Adventure. Uh, well, like I, I, I know you, you, you can, <laughs> was a real game. I know people on Steam who like use the the custom apps to just like fuck with people, like. Oh yeah. I, for 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 one for a couple months, I had a friend. Whenever we played Left 4 Dead 2, the, the thing was, X is playing. Oh my god, my anus doesn't stretch that far. That's great. Probably a game now. <laughs> on on the Unity Store. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Direct 3D 12 is something that very very frighteningly, uh, with a quickness, went from ah oh, that's that's a new thing. That's going man. It's gonna be forever. We get to fuck around with that too. <sighs> Oh, hmm. usable, interesting. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot, a lot of that has to do with the good work of uh, Joshi. You might know him from Dixvix. 
Uh, and Yeet. part of part of that is enabled by API Trace, which is a utility he wrote or uh, they wrote to uh, go through uh, DirectX and OpenGL um, API calls uh, that a program makes to understand like why things are happening the way they do. Kind of crucial if you are reverse engineering a DirectX 11 or 12 driver and you need to understand what the games are doing so you can implement the various system calls. Um, this uh, So for DirectX 12 specifically, this is in alpha because they're still working through some stuff. Um, like right now, Resident Evil 8 Village launches again and a bunch of other games using Denuvo will now launch if you're trying to record uh, gameplay so that you can crawl through the API. It's really, really useful because, you know, other, otherwise you're kind of just groping around in the dark trying to make your driver work. Uh, so yes, thank- uh, a couple of things with this, though. Um, ray tracing has been noped from orbit on this just because reasons deal with it. Nod your head, accept it, peasants. And uh, something I think Pedro might be interested in is that dirt is back on the menu. You can now play it. Which it still boggles uh, my mind that you can play precisely fuck or all in DX12. <laughs> you can run Dirt Five through API Trace. That that's what this is doing. And uh, uh, Jordan uh, Joshua didn't <laughs> create API Trace. It's been around for a long, long time. This, well, is, this just is just his fork. fork. Yeah, to um, just want to make that terribly no, clear. No, Otherwise, I know no, that's someone's jo- gonna jo- put Josh it. Did it. <laughs> Send all your API trace related questions he, to Josh's. He wrote the API API, man. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he wrote the API trace API. It's, but, in, it's, uh, yeah. it's under the, his Git account. So there. Yeah, it is. It, it's his own fork, which he forked specifically to work uh, to enable uh, D3D12 uh, API tracing on the Linux. Go figure. Uh, and yeah, it is uh, if you're having issues with Dirt 5 and you need to get an API trace of it. It works now. Very, very nice. Seriously. Uh, ever since D9VK was a thing, Joshi has been one of my favorite people. You got low status. <laughs> I do. I mean, the, well, what else is new? Fair. So, uh, a while back, we reported that the there was a reverse engineering effort for the GTA code. Uh, what was it? Uh, GT3 and uh, Vice City. Yes. <laughs> They did a thing, put it up on the GitHubs, and um, like, hey, go play with it. You still need the art assets from the game. So, I mean, Rockstar, you're still making money. You get a little cheddar coming your way. But, hey, this is perfectly legal to do, at least in the States. So, uh, yeah, it turns out uh, uh, they didn't like that. Bogus yeah, claim is no, bogus. Take two. Uh, yeah, it, take yeah, two interactive decided. They showed up and... We're gonna- uh, yeah, drop the nope hammer. They use the <laughs> misuse, yet again, we've never seen this before, especially by a game company, um, of the DMCA. And, uh, you know, to maintain the safe harbor clause, GitHub had to pull it, and they waited. Well, lo and behold, Take-Two didn't even bother with a legal response. You know, they, these these guys and gals had, you know, the ones who did the reverse engineering had to get the lawyer, had to spend the money, and, like, do the counter notice, and, like, hey, by the way, this is legal, go fuck yourselves. And, um... Yeah, they were just being dicks because they can't. Yeah, they they knew they had <laughs> no legal anything against this because this was clean room reversing, you know, engineering thing. This is like this is how we get the bios for the, from IBM. Same principle, and uh, yeah, they can just get fucked because they were still making money from this. This is just Nintendo level bullshit. Yeah, n- not even Nintendo would be stupid enough to pull that. But uh, that's the thing. Uh, when, for example, the other big DMCA one that we covered was the YouTube DL one. And in that one, they specifically pointed out, okay, the issue is the test cases in the uh, comments and the readme. Those are not okay because those are pointing to our uh, IP. We hold the rights to that. So you can't just go and tell people, oh yeah, use YouTube DL to download our music videos. Can't do that. With the uh, take two uh, DMCA takedown, there were zero, none, there was nothing specifically pointed out that breached and people were pissed because GitHub took it down with nothing, but it's back now. (laughs) <laughs> Remember, publishers, developers, <laughs> you don't want people to actually be able to play your games. Mm-hmm. You might want th- you 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 want them to look at them and say, "I cannot play this, therefore I will not buy it." Jordan, I need to be able to control the entirety of all messaging done with this game from a decade ago because shut up. 
<laughs> I mean, okay, here, here, here's the mind-boggling thing. Fucking EA figured this out with Command & Conquer. They're mm-hmm. like, hey, mm-hmm. these guys just completely redid our game for us so that it runs on modern modern systems. Why are we mad at them? There you go. They here's the rest say, of our stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if, if you're, if you're going to take on that technical debt for us, oh, whoa, whoa, okay. Well, yeah. And you're doing it for free? Mm-hmm. Oh. And, and people are still going to be buying the assets in order to play? Yeah. yeah, this sounds like, like a horrible financial decision. There was nothing. Oh, this, 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 is, this is bad business to let people play your game. Yeah. It's terrible. Fil- filthy somethings. <laughs> I don't know. There has been an update to Pedro's online waifu. It, yeah, basically my own uh, MMO crack, uh, <laughs> which died, which, you know, uh, speaking of EA, they killed back in 2015. Being reverse engineering. But, uh, yes, uh, the team, uh, the community of uh, very, very um, talented people took the client files for Need for Speed World and completely reverse engineered the server and the launcher right, from right. the We're, client why, files Why is there alone. some Linux stuff in here? I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, so the game itself doesn't, doesn't have a Linux version uh-huh. and they havenn't gotten to the point where they can oh, just you know, they, they mentioned it. you that's why we're talking yes as you may read dick. there uh, no no uh, as you may read there uh, I provided some assistance to uh, this particular release okay. uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah the uh, new l- version of the launcher for um, need for uh, or soapbox race world as it's called now. Uh, is available and it works properly on I, Linux. I, I immediately finally. don't like it because it's got the VW check engine fucking late night. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you have some PTSD with that. Yeah, I got some VW. Yeah, so of course I've seen that. And yeah, the uh, it it actually gives you all of the settings and everything works properly on Linux now, which wasn't the case for a long time. You had to do some shenanigans. And go to different places. So if you just go to Lutris and you down, you install Soapbox Race World, thank you very much for approving that very quickly, Strider. Uh, it'll work. It'll just work. So I have a question, great. though. <laughs> now that Shoot. Pedro is associated with this project, how mm. long until it dies? Mm. Mm. Ah, it's not a Linux native thing. <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> not Linux native. You need wine to run it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So so far, the only projects you've been attached to are Linux native things. So maybe, maybe this, this is, confirmation is a game bias. that I liked from I don't know back in the day. For all we know, Pedro's got a side hustle slaughtering non Linux native shit too. We just don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, no, those are not open source. So. Kind of like this, man. Okay, this this st- one's open source. Oh, then why why doesn't well, it, Pedro. Because the game itself is not, and this, the this, launcher this is, is open source. But the game servers. itself, yeah, the, the server is open source. The launcher is open source. The game client files, the the ones that EA created, that still isn't. I've immediately had to learn more about this than I care about. So, did you see? Did it, before we get out of here, um, the Time Fighter remastered that the guys had worked on. They completely redid all of the. Uh, the original like tie fighter game like all the cam mm-hmm. all the campaigns i was very excited headed over mod db i'm like oh man there's like seven gigs this is gonna be nice it's gonna be sweet and it's closed source it's windows only that's what i wrote and when i retweeted him on twitter and they like they wrote me back They're like no 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 not not run, not run it through lutris yeah we're, we're working on getting the video to play under I'm like why the fuck is this closed source do you know you're never going to be able to sell this or put any type of money to it or Disney going to come after motherfucker. We know how this yeah, works. Yeah, because at that point, they actually have grounds to come after yes. you. <laughs> no. Lucasfilm has got the, I, I don't know, it's boggled my mind. I, I was a little grumpy about that. I was looking forward to playing some uh, Type Fighter. and Yeah, that, that that's like OG. That's the classic. Yeah, yeah. Well. X-Wing versus Type Fighter. Yeah. Womp, womp. yeah. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, you're not going to be able to see the chairquisition unless you're running it in a 1600p window or smaller. Otherwise, you're just going to get a black screen. And no, sorry. (laughs) 
Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, give me an M, give me an E, give me an A, give me a T. What's that spell? Meat RPG, developed by Trippin' Bears, done on the Horizon Engine, aka Game Maker Studio 2, with a bunch of proprietary extra nonsense. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. Uh, what is it? Meat is a pixel art RPG game in a horror sci fi setting with renowned fight. Movement and character development system. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I can't finish that with a with a straight face. Okay. <laughs> Unravel the man, the mystery of a sinister substance and become a hero of a small Canadian. Oh, that's why all the beavers are here. Okay, it's Canadian. Uh, a small Canadian city during the Gold Rush era. It must be French Canada. Think, yeah, we gotta we gotta the think. Tr- the uh, trees tripping. don't wiggle like that outside of um, Ontario. There's. There's not enough maple syrup for it to okay. be French Canada, though. Right. Uh, we got to thank uh, we got to thank Trippin' Bears. They send us some keys. Uh, so I guess let's let's go into it. Ven, how did it run on Debian? It didn't. <laughs> not even a little bit. <laughs> so I had the foresight. I'd mentioned a couple of weeks ago. That it's it's some keys for it. And we're just getting around to play around with it. And I had mentioned to Pedro, Pedro Mateus. I'm like, hey man, uh, this thing doesn't even fucking start. And Pedro got back to me and he said, hey, uh, well, it does start if you launch it from inside, uh, not through Steam, but if you go to the game directory and launch it directly from the command line, it does start armed with this kernel of knowledge. Um, it still didn't fucking work, man. Uh, and that, that, that was on Debian 11 on my Threadripper, my 1920X, my 2060. Didn't get to put any of that to use because when I launched it, it just gives me this like, jacked up error screen. I'm like, oh, Okay. It's just pitch black with like a nice little red line around it going, shit's broke, son. Um, LOL. Okay. So I, I thought I'd take the next step. I'm like, okay, fine. Let's try it in Proton. Maybe it works in Proton. This this has proved to be a successful strategy on more than one occasion, unfortunately. Same error, but at least it was the same error displayed using DXVK in Vulcan. And um, I didn't have to launch it from the <laughs> game folder. I could launch it directly from Steam to get the error of the software failure. Press, let, you could press the button. It didn't do fuck or all. So I wouldn't know if it's any fun or not because I ran out of fucks to give, kids. That's right. There you go. Fuck this nonsense. Yeah, so on Fedora 34 Sorry and 64 bit. Nice. Yeah, with the uh, R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, I ran into a very similar story uh, that Ven did. But you know what? It was 2 o'clock in the morning and I got bored. So I decided to poke around a little bit more. Uh, there's, if you look at the terminal output, there's a bunch of errors with JSON parsing. So I went and I looked through the JSON files. And then I looked at the error again and I realized... Ha! Huh, maybe it's an issue with the native resolution of the monitor, and so I go into Nvidia settings and I drop my my one of my screens down to 1080p, and lo and behold, the game starts. I can actually get into it. So it's busted to the point where it won't launch on anything bigger than a 1080p screen. It's actually 1600p. Uh, Pedro will correct me on that. But it launches in a window, and it can't launch mm-hmm. in like a, a UHD screen. Good, good job, guys. I don't even I don't even understand what the problem is. So the point and click controls, they're bad. Um, I know gameplay was rough during the DOS ages, but I shouldn't have to, like, use the very, very edge of my cursor to click on something. Uh, everything is a little too low. Um, if I if I have to sing this game's praises at all, the sound design, very, very good. The pixel art design, very, very good. It's very evocative of that Ultima era style of game. But here, here, here we get to the fun segment. Because, you know, play, playing on native 1080p on my UHD monitor makes the pixels look extra pixely. I got pixels in my pixels, man. <sighs> so this, so first off, this isn't a roguelike, which is shocking because you look at this game and you think, oh, this is a hipster pixel roguelike. Nope, someone actually designed this. Um, mm-hmm. the gameplay wise, there's Did you get credit lot- for that? Yeah. Game, gameplay wise, <laughs> there's... <it's> worth- <laughs> A lot of waiting <laughs> is if you're watching the, the gameplay footage here, um, the atta- it kind of the game kind of punishes you for taking a very active approach on like combat or movement You kind of just click at the thing that you want to either walk towards or shoot and then you wait. Um, so here. So here we are. We have a game that barely works really, really shitty uh, exploration and traversal mechanics and crappy fight mechanisms, which is kind of the core CRPG (laughs) gameplay feature set. 
the story, uh, the story can be good and all, but again, you need to actually be able to play the game to experience the story and not feel like le poo poo. And you know, after after about the thirty minute mark, I finished the tutorial and I realized I really don't care. I'm not having fun with this game. And then I'm like, wait, how much are they charging for this game? Like five bucks? No, they're charging twenty dollars for this game that cannot open in a window in a larger than 1600p monitor (laughs) and is just generally not fun to play. So I got to give it one share. Usually I try to find some positive or some good spin on it, but there isn't one. Uh Aha. It got me out of having to play it. (laughs) Yeah. uh, That is, seems to be the one. Uh, But yeah, over here I was actually surprised when I clicked the play button and it, wouldn't launch because you know KDE Neon is based on uh, the latest Ubuntu LTS and Ryzen 7 3700 X and GTX 1080. They've proven very capable in running video games. It's also so, fucking 2021 where this shit is not a thing anymore. Yeah, on Linux. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, no, it felt a bit weird, but okay, let's try the obvious one. Go to the folder, launch it from there. It did. I didn't even think to look any more into it because I just went to the folder and it launched from there. It's like, oh, okay, so cool. It doesn't like full screen. Like Jordan mentioned, it just shows up in a window. Uh, but if there's one thing that Kwin can do, right, is manage windows. It sucks as a compositor and just about everything else, but it manages windows real good. Uh, so yeah, on the video that you're looking at right now, it's locked at 60 at 2560 by 1440. And yeah, to Jordan's point, the highest resolution, if you go to the uh, screens.json file, you can actually see what the highest supported resolution is. 2560 by 1600. Can I, just, can I just point out <laughs> that you shouldn't have to go look through JSON files to figure out how to start your fucking game? <laughs> yeah, no, I think maybe if you added 3840 by uh, 2160 to it, just following the same convention as the other ones, probably it would have worked. But they didn't, and this is their game, and they're charging a shit ton of money for it. Now, the visuals and the background music are very well done. Very well done. Uh, And the controls, yeah, it's keyboard and mouse affair. Don't even bother trying the controller because this is game What does that running man icon remind me of? Like he's, he's like doing the Charlie something. Brown dance. Something, dun, 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 oh, yeah. dun, 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 dun. It's like Snoopy's in the background. Linus is playing the fucking piano or Shredder or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I completely forgot that that little uh, thingy was there. Uh, yeah, it's for the fun. It's been a while since I've seen a game which does one thing so very right when it is something that I appreciate and then just gets everything else wrong. Let's start with the thing that it does right. Atmosphere. It has tons of atmosphere dripping out of literally everything you can look at and listen to. Uh, the creepy background music, I'm pretty sure they even sampled the baby crying at one point. And the visuals are very, like, uh, indie horror style video game, which I appreciate. I like the horror genre very, very much. So, atmosphere, they nailed it. But they didn't nail well, the ability to launch the game from Steam, the ability to make your game full screen without having to rely on an iffy... Uh, window manager at best uh they didn't basically i think they realized that the pacing is anywhere between glacial and uh snail so your your character moves so slow that they actually give you the haste skill for free the moment you finish the tutorial uh and that awesome atmosphere that i mentioned is completely ruined by the edgelord dialogue and fourth wall breaking that is always happening with each and every single chest that they get the weapons seller in town is atori hanzo i'm not joking uh so What's yeah he doing uh, in i like why is he throwing baseballs at you? i have no idea <laughs> I have no idea what he's doing in Canada, but uh, he is there. And yeah, no, the, I like when games don't take themselves terribly seriously. I do. Uh, Turnip Boy uh, commits uh, tax evasion was uh, the perfect example for that. I absolutely love that game. But in in Meat, it all sounds so desperate to be hip with the kids that it's just, just wrong. And the first several quests are a complete waste of time. 
they're all fetch quests and to the point it, that it culminated for me is you go from town to the little mine that I was just in if you're watching the video version and um the moment you get there oh yeah you need to go back to town and buy some uh I think it's four um four mining picks and two helmets uh, which are not cheap that's what I'm doing there uh it, it's Okay, so you're going to make me go all the way back to town now. Oh, you can take the train and it'll just take you there, like, instantly. Yeah, that costs 20 bucks. I kind of need that money to buy the stuff. Fuck that. You're just fucking wasting my time at this point. And if that's the first impression that you're going to give me of the game, I'd honestly rather go to the dishes. So you get one chair. <laughs> Yeah, the one one thing I forgot to bring up uh, is the mapping is also really awkward. Uh, we were we were talking a bit of it in the pre pre super shows and about how there's like different levels of elevation, and the game does a very poor job of explaining where they are and where you are in relation to everything. Which, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, which which makes again which makes the navigation really really painful. And considering that's like ninety percent of this game. So is and something, everything is okay, so slow. I, I'm coming. <laughs> I, I'm looking at this. You know, I'm seeing decent artwork. Uh, I don't know about the audio, but is is this fixable? Maybe, maybe. If can, if can, uh, can this be polished into a twenty dollar game? But we're like, all right, right on. Um, can it? I don't think it can be polished into a twenty dollar game. I don't think there's a twenty dollar game in here. I think there's definitely a solid ten dollar game in here. Yes, uh, if they fixed and tightened up a couple of things, specifically the exploration, the combat, the movement. And, and you know, you know the whole the whole game the whole gameplay <laughs> aspect of the game the whole actual if they, game if they just yeah. did it again but better <laughs> it might it might be yeah good. no the art is great and the music is amazing and it, yeah no they just failed at the game yeah you need you need the gameplay to back it up and it's unfortunately just like not there it kind of needs to launch too yes also you know <laughs> launching on people's monitors when they have like larger than a 1600p <laughs> monitor might might be might be a little handy like you you know i'd even forgive the serpent in the staglands approach of like well you know what we're just gonna launch it in a, like a 320 by 180 window because <laughs> yes. you know at least that at least it launches yeah that g at least gives, it launches. gives you something to aim for man i will say the one good thing about meat rpg is i now have a quest to go find what that gift of the Cactus monster attacking the couple in the car is from. Right. What the, yeah, is it, I think it's like a Power Ranger or something. I, I don't know. But hey, thank you for that, sir. It ha has to be. All right. Coming up next, we got some hate mail. That That's, that's it. it. No, right. That's it. <laughs> it's the end. And if you were as disappointed as I was when, you know, that. What about game fucking sucked. Highlander VR? <laughs> that, I mean, that's Gorm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to play with like official Highlander characters. Oh man, that would, that would be pretty good. You can like whip Sean Connery's head at like another guy, throw in Clancy Brown's head, and see if you can like get them to ricochet off each other. This <laughs> yes, it's, it's like pool, but with severed heads. It, it does like ninety quips randomly. I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, it won't make you sound anywhere near as sexy as Christopher Lambert or Lambert, uh, as I'm uh, usually reminded. But yes, if you'd like to correct us on our pronunciation, because I know for a fact that I cocked up something during the show. That's just a fact. So you can do that. You can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, pick uh, LGC Weekly as the show that you'd like to send your bit of hate mail to. And we'll be featured right here, right now. If you are a game developer uh, who wants us to play your game, make sure to include three keys. Mm -mm. Or if you're trying to advertise your uh, crowdfunding campaign, don't I bother. I to do that. Next week, remind <laughs> me. Uh, yeah, we had a, like two weeks ago, we had a developer for, for yeah, win you... Windows game. Yeah, I teased it. I, asshole mm -hmm. move on my part. Mm, my bad. <laughs> we'll get that in next week. We'll uh, publicly shame them for no, yeah. <laughs> not, not sending keys and uh, blanket emailing something that ends with at linuxgamecast.com. Next week on Linux Gamecast, asses of fire, by the way. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, Canada, it is a day. And this comes from Synthetic Owl. And Synthetic Owl writes, Jordan, my calendar informs me that it's Canada Day. The only uh, Canadians I know of are Linus Tech Tips, Wolverine, and you. Interesting group. 
at the triad of Canada. Did you do <laughs> anything special for the day, like ice fishing, moose spotting, or perhaps attend a David Cronenberg film festival? Question mark. Anyway, just want to say happy Canada Day. Sincerely, synthetic gal. Well, you know what? I did I did celebrate Canada Day by consuming media from everyone's favorite Canadian export, William Shatner. I watched a Star Trek movie. I think it was um the it was, it was the whales. <laughs> that was the, 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 yeah. the, the voyage home. That's that's the one. Uh that, that that's what I ended up doing for Canada Day. <laughs> Otherwise I stayed I stayed indoors and tried to control my dog because explosions were happening outside. Oh man, you, did, you, did, you didn't like, participate in the uh like, um, violent <laughs> No, I I, I I did I did enjoy watching some children shoot some fireworks at each other though. That was that that like, that, that builds character though, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like so, some some traditions hold true. Like you think the kids are you think there's something wrong with the kids, <laughs> but once they start like firing explosives at one another, you realize, yeah, the human race is fucked. We're just gonna blow ourselves up. They're gonna yeah. be all right. <laughs> I, I see that is the, that, that gives me hope for future durations. It's like a good Roman candle, like just to the face. Yeah. Oh, just some, some yeah, second no, degree just, burns. That's teaching hand eye him, coordination. You know. um, <laughs> yeah. Actions have consequences. Actually kids. Learn. Yes. A <laughs> little bit of stress. I mean, you're going to be able to roll back on that later in life when, you know, uh, something going slightly wrong. You're like, you know what? Compared to getting shot in the face with that Roman candle maybe, or, yeah, no, something it, it or something is going to drop real and you're going to have awful PTSD and you're just going to go into the fetal position. <laughs> yeah, but that was going to happen if you're going to get PTSD from a Roman candle in the first place, man. You you were just genetically predisposed. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Them some hot takes. Not really. That's just a fact. <laughs> sure. Roman candles, kids. Send, send, send your hate mail to uh, Vince Stone. <laughs> yeah. Also, shoot each other the Roman candles. Um, oh yeah, yes. Good advice. <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, we have a Chrome Next, convert. This is uh, Arcadius. Arcadius. <laughs> and uh, they they say, not a Steam user here. I will say that a lot of these cheap Chromebooks are being converted to Linux gaming machines with uh, PPL using Retroarch, Pi Packer, Stadia, Fedcade, and nice. a few other services. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm a Pi Packer. I was packing some pie into my mouth. What's Fedcade, <laughs> Pedro? This sounds like some bullshit you know about, and get wrong. <laughs> The yes, <laughs> I did confuse Retro Pie with Retro Arch. My bad, <laughs> but yeah, no Retro Arch. Uh, it, it that does run very well, and let's face it, most of the emulators are actually very very light on resources. So even if you do have that same uh, Celeron quad core that most of the uh, Chromebooks seem to have, you'll be able to run most of the emulators just fine. It's like the PSP and PS2 ones that you're probably going to have a problem with. Forget PS3, not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, the, that is actually a very good use case because comparatively speaking, a Raspberry Pi 4 has, uh, in terms of performance of the CPU, uh, it is about on par with those um, quad-core Celerons. With the caveat that it uses a heck of a lot more power. Here's the question, though. Um, how is uh, ARM emulation on Chromebooks for uh, for the Android stuff? Very good. Okay. Yeah, because it's uh, it's yeah. all art. It's not. There's no like native byte code. It's all the intermediate yep. runtime. And I mean, like, so to to uh, to Arcadius's point, it looks like they're bringing up a lot of like streaming or cloud based services. So yeah, like this this is kind of what I was saying say earlier. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Pi, and Pi Packer too, uh, because it's all about like, essentially you spin up an emulated version of something and then Sorry, you're not being play. nine Pi Packer. Yeah. The <laughs> sequel. <laughs> yes. But, but yeah, like, uh, but th th this, this is where like stuff like WebGL, uh, and WebAssembly come in handy if you're making games for Chromebooks, right? Like then you can yes. leverage the actual Here's a power and not have to deal with like what, what I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking like a really easy, you know, uh, not easy, just a there type system for setting up a, um, like a MAME type machine, but you know, with emulation, what are, what are uh, the common is, is there, here's my question, like video out options on a standard Chromebook non-existent. Is that 
I think it's HDMI. Uh, HDMI. Okay. Yeah. If they do have it, so I'm thinking about like putting that in a cabinet. And you some know. of them have Type C that goes both in which and is, out. Which, but, but that's HDMI, right? Like the HDMI to Type C adapter. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just an issue. <laughs> so, I mean, that, um, it, what I'm thinking about something like that is like, maybe you don't have to buy, but you get a spare, like, old Chromebook. I'm like, okay, I can repurpose it into an emulation station. If, if you still yeah. have that Chromebook from school that you got at one point, yep. And that they, that they didn't roll back. Arch on it and just <laughs> yes, go. <that> you've lost. <laughs> and it has built in battery backup. So, yeah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> always, always good to repurpose old laptops, right, Pedro Mateus? Collect them. Put them on the shelf. I have no idea what you're talking about. None whatsoever. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls on that bombshell, we're going to bounce the hell out of here with our emulation station chrome infestation. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm there. I'll answer your thing. I'll click on the stars or hearts or whatever it is this week, and it will be quite brilliant. Or I'm just at Vin on our federated timeline, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Send me an email or something, however that works. I'm everyone's second favorite leprechaun, 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 Jordan Spung. You can find me, Lucky Charms, at The Burning Fool on Twitter, or follow me on Twitch on twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. I'm going to be streaming some game design stuff on Monday, working on a Dungeon Crawl Classics hack, so uh, come watch that if you're interested. And I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter, or if you must, at Unaccounted4 with the actual number 4 on uh, mass.lettuxgamecast.com. There better be a Unless, par- parody band called Leprechaun. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It's like a Christian rock corn cover band. I totally watch them or at least, yeah, listen to them on YouTube. Uh, do let us know. And uh, yeah, uh, on Twitter is usually the best place to uh, hit me up. Discord. At me. Send me a DM. Credits. Discord, yeah. <laughs> Chain shucks. Chain shucks. Better than over charts. <laughs> I mean, depends on the hand that wields them, right? It's debatable, but I mean, it's no leprechaun. What 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 what, what is stronger, the go for chucks or the hand who wields them? <laughs> we gotta thank our lovely, <laughs> lovely party patreons. Our advisors giving us way too money, too much money, like Omegas and Arthur and we got anyone else? No, we got our executive producers. How dare you accuse Barbara them of being Scott fiscally <laughs> responsible? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Foxdog, Atomic <laughs> Aspect, G, MT, Drummer, Holy Toast, and our dual little Nikki fans, the left and right hands of Satan, Darkwing, and Abstraction. Chicago kicks ass. Ooh. With sea, sea monsters, monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, and Kyle X. Yes, but the beautiful, death beautiful notes party also death notes. Up, uh, Nova Key, Basil B, Chaz, Romero, uh, Mark N, System T, Craig H, Renee, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smash, Chris, still in, still in G. Yes, uh, and Benjamin, <laughs> still in G. <laughs> do do not want Stephen B and Dirty Dean. They're the opening And of act. course, all of the chairlings. Colin, Ryan, TG, Daniel e. L, Vascott, Vast Douglas, Pat. Rohit, and Jonas Rulo. Steve E. And our latest Ryan Oil of Hope, of Hope which I need to make Zeno. one line so it's not Oil of Hope. Oil of Hope. <laughs> Oil of Hope. Very do, you, do, you, do, you, do you mix it with the vinegar of despair to make like a nice existential vinaigrette? And a nice side of dying in the fire. Beautiful people. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Ooh, we got like a last minute wiggle. Wiggle. Five dudes. <laughs>